Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Money Matters Top Tips for Success, where each and every day I bring on new business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and have them share their top tips for success with you. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Sean Clark on the line. He's Director of Financial Planning over at Centura Wealth Advisory. Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Happy to be here. So, Sean, I'm excited to get more into what you're doing over at uh, Centura Wealth Advisory and how you're helping your clients. But before we do that, let's get a little bit further into your background. So how did you get started in your career and in business? Yeah, so uh, I think I I got started post-college. I was a uh, baseball player in a former life, and when that finished uh, and graduated from college, I had the opportunity to uh, join a local firm at the time and get my Series 7 license, which just gave me the right to basically go knock on doors and pound the pavement and start talking to prospects about uh, financial planning and investments and uh, really what I might be able to help them with in their goals and future uh, as related to finances. So, you know, you're you're obviously uh, many years into your career, uh, and so you've managed to make a career of financial services and done, done well. Um, that being said, there's some entrepreneurs out there or, you know, people that are just getting out of college and they're thinking about paths, and some people are really attracted to financial services. Um, I think financial services, being a financial advisor, all that, I, I was one for many years and loved it. I think it's a great, it's a great path for somebody to make a long-term career. Um, what kind of advice would you give to that new person that's out there that's kind of green and just getting started, maybe where you were at, where you were just getting your Series 7 license on on making it a good career? Yeah, great question. And I think it's really important to match your personality type with this type of a career. Um, The attrition rate is very high on people that go in and um, end up leaving and and not liking it. So I think it's something where you have to have an entrepreneurial uh, type spirit. You have to be a go-getter and a creative thinker, um, able to be self-motivated and really – be intellectually curious, so find ways and creative solutions to connect with people and talk to people. I think those are some of the personality types that are important um, in order to do well in this business. But assuming you have those, uh, it's really about just being consistent and persistent with each and everything you do. Um, This business is really a lot of no's and a lot of we'll see and we'll get back to you. And you really have to be uh, confident in what you're doing and believe in the value that you're providing for clients. And you need to just do it consistently all day, every day, and tell your story as much as as possible. And I think that um, paired with the personality type that enjoys that type of a thing is a recipe for success. Oh, my gosh, that's awesome. And it's so funny that you say that because when people ask me, like, how I was able to grow the the, uh, the podcast, I was like, I just did the same thing I did when I was a financial advisor. You have to be persistent <laughs> and consistent every single day, and you just have to do it every single day, and you, have to, and you get better over time. And it's funny because now it started – I mean, I put out more – episodes. I put out as many episodes as most people do in a year and a week. And I'm like, why? Because I wow. do it all day, every day. And that's what, you know, that's if you want to be the best, if you want to get really good at it. I mean, what does an advisor have to do? They have to be on the phone all day. They have to be talking to that's people. Right. Obviously, they're, they're servicing their current clients, but um, you're not going to be the best if you're not, you know, full contact. So I love that advice, Sean, and it's, and it's, and it's real. Um, that being said, let's uh, let's switch it up a bit. I do want to get into what you're doing over at Centura Wealth Advisory. So first, uh, tell me a little bit more about the firm, please. Sure. So uh, at Centura Wealth Advisory, we're an RIA. Uh, we service primarily high net worth families and business owners. Uh, we focus on a lot of tax planning strategies and investment management around uh, planning solutions and tax managed investments and things like that. So a lot of what we do centers around tax. And it's pretty much the the types of clients we work with um, either have a high income and are such trying to mitigate some of the tax liabilities they face on the income side. Uh, It could be a money money in motion type event where they're selling a business or liquidating a piece of real estate or uh, they have an inheritance or something else. Um, Or there's really an estate tax liability. So their estate is large enough that uh, they have estate tax exposure and they're looking for planning solutions around how to mitigate that. So those are the areas that we focus on at Centura Wealth Advisory, and there's various avenues and means around that, but uh, that's kind of from a high level what we do. 
So, I mean, I, I like your title, so director of financial planning. That's a that's a new thing. So, meaning uh, as firms have grown and the account and the um, complexity of financial planning and what financial advisors do um, has grown. There has been this added layer, especially in the RIA space. I'd say uh, last five years, maybe, um, of, the, of director of financial planning, meaning you're overseeing uh, many different advisors and you're providing that next layer, even of um, of support for financial um, for planning. That being said, um, overall, when you when you think about the financial planning net um, landscape and um, and just the complexity of plans, what's possible, and how things are changing. Um, any kind of themes that you're noticing um, in general that you care to comment on from your vantage point, because it's a little bit different what you do. Sure. You know, I think um, thematically, over the last five years, I would say there's been a lot of commoditization in the planning world. Um, there's a lot of firms out there that do planning, and planning is really specific to the individual. So if you're a young mm -hmm. person starting out with a family and looking to grow a business, the type of planning you need is much different than if you're a 30-year business owner who's looking to transition the ownership of your business to uh, you know, a third-party buyer or maybe your family or whoever it is. And so strategic planning can be different at different points in time. And so I think as a, as a whole, the word planning kind of gets commoditized and thrown around. And I would, I would challenge that in that the industry really is split up into different types of financial planning. And it's important for folks to find uh, advisors and planners that specialize in the areas that they work in and are well-versed all day, every day in the nuances of those types of things. So um, we work in a very narrow scope with business owners and uh, real estate investors and things like that. But we know that space and we know it really, really well. And the services that we can provide that space uh, don't exist at all the different shops. So I think there's been a lot of specializations that have come about, especially in the RIA industry. Um, but there's a lot of really good planning out there in general. So I think it's easy to find planners, but it's hard to find good planners that specialize in what you do. And anyone that's looking for planners should, um, you know, dig a little deeper and make sure that the, the folks are well-versed in their specific area of need. Um, and, you know, that, that goes with all different types. So, um, yeah, I think that would be my advice for, or at least commentary on the overall landscape and what I see today from where I sit. What is the um, – so somebody's listening to this, um, and your, your shop obviously specializes in planning. Um, what's, the, what's the sweet spot for the type of client that's right for uh, Centura Wealth Advisory? Um, you know, the sweet spot from an income standpoint is probably a million dollars a year in income or higher. Um, estate tax liabilities, uh, that comes to a $25 million estate and larger. And money in motion events is really anything, probably a business sale of $5 million or more. Um, real estate disposition, we do things like, you know, tax exchanges and things like that that might be a million or two million. Um, so it just depends. But I think what's a little bit unique about what we do is we, uh, from a planning standpoint, we look to be engaged on the front end to do the work and the analysis and due diligence on whatever planning strategies we are recommending and coming up with. And we kind of paint the picture for the client. And if they choose us to go implement those strategies and manage them for them, that's great. We also do a lot of work with other advisors. So um, advisors may have a book of business and they may have one client in that book of business who's selling, selling a, a business and has this specific need and they may bring us in as a partner to work with them on that specific transaction. So that's something we do as well, where we may just work as an engagement to develop the plan and let other advisors continue to service that. That's awesome. Um, so, Sean, if somebody wants more information on Centura uh, Wealth Advisory, what's the best way for them to get it? Uh, CenturaWealth.com is our website. We've got uh, a lot of information on there. We've got some blogs and things that I've written, so you get a good sense of who we are and what we do. We've got our uh, biography information on there, so get a sense of the team. And, and kind of the reading through some of our content will give you an idea of uh, how we think and how we attack things. That's perfect. Um, well, hey, Sean, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and uh, all the great work you're doing over at Centura Wealth Advisory. Uh, and to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store, um, do all those great things we do to support our podcasters. I really do appreciate it. And uh, Sean, thanks again for coming on the show.